Hey, this is Barry. In this video, I'm going to share something with you that I noticed in my childhood. I would notice that the um, teenagers around would be riding these antique bicycles from the look like they were from the 50s. And I would notice they had grease fittings on the hubs, the um, wheel bearing hubs. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, that's, that's pretty neat. It's a shame they don't put those on newer bikes. And I thought, well, well, I'll just, um, I'll try it. I'll get a drill and a threader and some grease fittings, and it works great. It will make your bicycle pedal easier and freer. And when you're coasting your bicycle, it's amazing. It it seems like it'll it'll coast just about forever until you start going up a hill. But uh, it's amazing um, how much more free your bicycle. Uh, can roll when you are able to you know get a grease gun and, and put a little fresh grease in the hubs anytime you want instead of um, the grease getting worn out and you got to take the hubs all apart and clean it and put fresh grease in that's a lot of trouble it's much easier to put a grease gun on there and just give it a couple of pumps of grease and it's got fresh grease in it I'm gonna show you how to put grease fittings on the wheel hubs on your bicycle and this bicycle right here I'm gonna fix up for my wife it needs a little work it has aluminum hubs and aluminum hubs are easier because they're thicker than like the steel ones I can show you later a steel one that I did but you have to put a little spacer otherwise um, the grease fitting will rub the shaft as the wheel rotates and I haven't done any coaster brake rear hubs I was planning on doing one eventually. I've looked at it and it looks like they may be a little more complicated to do. There's not that much room in there where you can drill a hole. But if you have aluminum hubs, it's pretty easy to do. And I'll get started now. Okay, first thing you do of course is remove the wheel. Okay, now there's several items you're going to need. You're going to need a package of standard grease fittings you can pick these up at most auto parts stores you're going to need a 3 16 drill bit and drill and you're going to need a quarter inch or size 28 tap to uh, put the new threads in okay you may need a special wrench to remove that uh, hub nut that the bearings ride on um, I have this wrench I made. You can probably get those online or uh, at a bike shop. I guess they would they're probably call it a hub wrench or something like that. Um, but that's what you're going to need to get this um, this keeper nut loose from that. And um, there's one of these keeper nuts um, and this... Um, this hub nut that goes up that the bearings ride on on each side I'm sure most of you know that I guess but for those who don't know so once you get this off then you should be able to back this out and access the bearings so this hub doesn't have the bearings with a keeper all the bearings are loose so keep the other side in and lean it this way so that all the bearings don't fall out and they get lost so because you're gonna have to keep up with them okay now I'm gonna try to catch all the bearings from this side in my hand one more in there. There it goes. Okay. Now you'll need a little cup or something to save these in. Now for this side you can jump, gently slide the shaft out without knocking out the bearings. And try to get them all out in your hand here. Which is not going to be easy as I thought because they're stuck in there. 
Yeah, you sure don't want to lose any of these bearings. Okay, that's all of them. Okay, let's see. Okay, in this particular hub, there's 10 on each side, so I can just put them all there. And just put 10 on each side when I put it back together. Now, you can wipe out this whole grease, and then, uh, then next we drill a hole for the grease fitting. Okay, what you want to do is find a place in the spokes that is the widest opening and you want to take a small punch and try to um, to make a little punch indention to help your drill bit stay in uh, place but you want to try to put the fitting right in the center so that when you pump grease in the hub uh, you know it'll be right in the center and the grease will come out equally on both sides so you just kind of get your drill positioned in there. If it's at a slight angle, it, uh, it's going to be okay because when you thread it, you can straighten up the threads so that uh, that's not a problem. Okay, now the tricky part. You have to turn this and work this in and out to get it started. Try to start it as straight as you can. Without moving it side to side much so that it can start the new threads. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started. You have to push down on it. If you went with a larger drill bit, then you would be in danger of not having enough metal to make good threads. You know, this hub is not aluminum, it's steel. But since it's a larger diameter, it sh should still work the same without the grease fitting contacting the shaft. But um, aluminum is easier to cut threads into. This just takes a little more time to uh, get the threads started. Okay, here's another little tip. If you're using a uh, a uh, tap threader tool like this, you may want to grind or file off one of the uh, the bratted ends that uh, keeps it in here, so that you can slip it out and reposition it um, around the spokes. Um, because you have to really apply some pressure with your thumb and hold it steady and work this around um, because if it moves side to side it, it's gonna take out what threads you've started but you can eventually work it around until the threads start and you'll have to hold the wheel between your legs and uh, work with it for a while uh, takes a little time but you can finally get the thread started and uh, but you don't want to run the tool too far in there or you'll wind up with threads that are kind of loose so see how you can kind of reposition this easier than you can if it were still completely attached yeah, I thought this was an aluminum hub, but it's the larger variety of a steel hub. But it's since it's the larger, hopefully it won't have an issue with the uh, 
grease fitting rubbing on the shaft that goes through and um, I'll see how it turns out here okay now you can get um, grease fittings that have an angle um, but these actually work best to just have a straight grease fitting and let's see how we did here we have to get in a strange position here to get it started and the last thing you want to do is cross thread it especially on this steel one it has a lot less metal to work with than an aluminum one okay that's nice and snug but started by hand now let's see Yep, it's nice and snug. Like I said, if you run that threader down there too deep, it'll actually make the threads more loose. And you don't want the threads loose. Okay. Definitely don't want to over tighten it and get it stripped out. Okay, that's nice and snug. Yeah. That'll work great. Now, we need to shake out any metal particles. You can um, get a can of um, carburetor spray solvent, like at AutoZone or Walmart, and you can spray down in there and just get any loose particles out and then let it dry. And then uh, you can clean up your bearings and your shaft um, and then uh, you don't have to put any grease when you put it back in although that could be helpful with these wheel bearings um, the grease may hold them in place for you <clears throat> okay well I'll do that and uh, then we'll put some grease in there and see what it looks like okay I have the front wheel back on the bicycle and uh, I usually like to have a, a slight little bit of play in the hub you just want to make sure you don't get it too tight because that makes more friction but I like to have just a slight barely perceivable amount of play in the bearings hopefully there's enough grease in this grease gun okay might take a few seconds to fill up the tube with grease to push it out Okay, watch for the grease coming out at the, where the uh, bearings are in the hub there. There we go, popped out. Both sides. Fresh grease in there. Well, there's some air in there. Okay, there we go. As you can see, there's plenty of grease coming out. Okay, when you remove the grease gun from the grease fitting, um, if you get too rough with it, you could possibly jerk it out. I've never done that to find out, but I assume, um, I think the best method is just to rock it side to side while you pull on it a little bit. Other position here. Okay, there we go. You don't want to rip that out because if you did, um, I don't know if you could get the grease fitting back in there because the threads would be ripped out. But um, you'll have to get the excess grease off here. And from time to time when you do put grease in here, you will have to wipe off. You know, the old grease will come out and you'll have to wipe it off so it doesn't sling all over your face while you're out for a ride my wife probably wouldn't 
wouldn't like that very much. Okay. Now, I'm to wipe that off my hand real right quick. It may go for quite some time. <clears throat> but, as I said, I would leave just a slight little bit of play to make sure the bearings couldn't possibly be tight, too tight. And uh, that's not going to be a problem, just a little slight bit of play to make sure you've reduced the friction and then the fresh grease. This is a older, smaller steel hub and it's pretty thin and the the shaft that goes through is pretty close to the hub housing and you can see how I uh, I took a little piece of um, I guess it's about two sixteenths aluminum or I think what I used is I had an old aluminum <clears throat> I had an old aluminum ladder that uh, was no good and I cu cut a couple of pieces out of it that was the equivalent of about two sixteenths of an inch thick and I drilled a hole through each piece and I used that as a spacer so my grease fitting uh, wouldn't have to thread all the way in there and uh, give a problem contacting that shaft you may have to do something like this if you have an older bike uh, with these um, you know smaller steel hubs and you wanna um, you know you wanna make it free as a bird like I've just shown you um, you, you may have to uh, to do something like this because it will not work if you um, turn that grease fitting down um, you'll just wind up stripping the threads out because it will contact the shaft so uh, there's an idea on what you're gonna have to do I don't know if you can see this one or not but this is the rear hub uh, on this old bike and it had the same small uh, hub on the rear that I had to do the same thing with spacers even though it's a freewheel hub um, on a um, this was originally a 12 speed mountain bike about 20 years old um, it had the same thin tube hub on the back um, but this is just to give you an idea of what you may encounter but as I said earlier in the video a rear coaster brake hub I haven't done one of those and I've looked at them and I think it would be a little more complicated and uh, there's not a whole lot of room to drill a hole into those but I may I may eventually do one of those later and uh, maybe do an update video okay now I got this grease fitting on the rear hub it's pretty much basically the same as the front um, okay let's go ahead and hopefully this grease gun won't have any more air pockets in it okay that um, stupid croc <clears throat> sorry that that croc made a funny sound didn't it mm, that's not very professional I'm gonna redo this let's see here well initially we just have to keep putting grease in there until you see it coming out but after this it should have enough in there so the next time you won't have to take as much time to, before the grease starts to come out of the hub there we go now Grease coming out of the hub. Work this side to side gently so we don't make sure and not get too rough on the 
grease fitting and jerk it out of the hub. The rear hub is done now. The next thing I wanted to show you is a grease gun injector needle. And with this, you can um, put grease in tight places such as um, your crank bearings without having to take your um, cranks all apart. Um, that's a lot of trouble to take that all apart and clean it. Uh, it's much more convenient just to be able to slip this grease gun needle in there and put a little fresh grease inside there without taking it all apart. Plus you can, you know, as with the hubs, you know, occasionally put a little fresh grease in there and that will make the, uh, the bicycle a lot more free and more efficient so that it's much easier to pedal. You can buy these at uh, most auto parts stores carry these. Um, so hopefully it won't, won't be too much of a problem to find one. This is a three-piece crank set and you can get the proper tools um, and you probably should. It takes a special tool to remove um, the crank and uh, but for this I'm gonna just use a little punch probably pretty unorthodox. Okay as you can probably figure I already loosened this up before I turn on the camera but just give you an idea you know it goes this one goes counterclockwise and you have to be really careful with these threads going back on okay um, there's a little opening here that you can get a a grease gun needle in um, these these are harder to to grease this way um, but I'll show you a little bit later in the video the old style regular I guess what do you call it a two piece crank um, you don't have to take anything loose okay now I got the grease gun needle on the end of the grease gun it's basically got a little grease fitting that goes right in just like a regular grease fitting and uh, I will put the needle in here and start pumping grease. And the type of grease I'm using, by the way, is is the red Lucas grease you can buy at Walmart. Okay, I could try to get a little back here, but let me turn this so the needle is open to this side I don't know that I'm really gonna get any in here but I'll, I'll try I would, um, for one thing, I'd have a rag handy while I'm making a video. But when you go to thread this back in, I would recommend the uh, the dropping the thread method. Okay, so I'm backing out here, and it dropped in. Well. Because if you run it backwards until you can feel it, feel it drop into the thread, then that's a way to try to reduce the chance of cross threading. Okay, it just dropped in. Now, usually once you drop a thread in, you can start t turning it clockwise. But if you run into any kind of resistance, I would repeat the... Um, the counterclockwise until a thread drops in. The last thing you want to do is is uh, cross thread this frame 
Let's see, I can try to put a little more grease um, in here. Turn the opening of the needle a little bit to try to get it worked in there. Yeah, I actually was able to get it to go in there. Okay, I got the grease in there. Yeah, this is um, messy, but um, it'll get the job done. I guess this is almost as much trouble as taking the entire thing apart, but maybe not quite as much trouble. But once again, like like on the wheel hubs, you want to make sure and not get this too tight, because if you get it too tight, then um, you'll have resistance there. Yeah, it's a little tight, a little loose there. Okay, when I tighten the keeper down, should be just about right. Okay, you don't want to overdo that. It's got the, just the slightest little bit of play. Just a slight little bit to make sure there's not any um, energy wasting drag or friction there. Um, especially when you're the power plant. This is the older style crank set. I believe they call this a a two-piece crank um, but anyway it's much easier because you don't have to take anything apart and uh, you try to turn the the open end of the needle I don't know if you can see that in towards the bearings you just kind of put it in there You just pump some grease in there. Kind of reposition it a little bit here and there. Pump some fresh grease in there. Okay. Some coming out there. Okay, now it's a little tricky on the back bearing, but you can kind of put the, the needle open. And careful, you don't want to stab yourself with a grease needle. And uh, kind of put it back there. Um, some of these have an opening where you can stick it in there better. Just kind of do it the same way as you do on the side I already showed you there. But yeah, some of these, the sprocket, won't allow you to stick the needle in there, but this one you can. Okay. So you basically do it that way. And uh, that way you can put fresh grease in there without having to, in the case of this one, without having to take anything apart. Um, instead of like the three-piece crank set up. This is the grease I was telling you about. Lucas. Red and tacky. That's some pretty good stuff. Now, these pedals. Um, these aren't spinning real free. They probably didn't put much grease in them when the bicycle was assembled. 
I don't know. There's some friction and drag there. And that's the whole idea of this video. Is uh, you get all this friction and drag out of your bicycle. It can be amazing how free and easy to pedal it can be. Now, what we need to do is get a small screwdriver and uh, try to pry this end cap without stabbing yourself with a screwdriver. Try to get this end cap out of here. Okay. Now, hopefully there wasn't too much dirt went in there. Okay. You just uh, put some grease in there. And you basically put your thumb over the end and squeeze until it pushes in there. And what you want to do here is keep putting grease in and squishing it in until until grease is coming out back here. Squishing this in. Hopefully it won't take too long and I'll just Leave the camera going so you can see. I don't think there's too much of a void inside there, so it won't take too much grease or time. You might turn it a little bit to help it work through there. Yeah, this uh, this isn't easy like the hubs, you know, with the grease fittings. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but there's your grease coming out on the other side now. Yeah, there we go. Surely you can see that on the video there. You just uh, stick the cap back on. And once that grease gets worked in there, it will reduce the, what friction there is in the pedal bearings. But when you get the friction and drag out of everything you can here on the moving parts, the more you ride it now, the more it'll free up. But that's basically it. Do the other pedal on the other side the same way. Yeah, I just thought I would share this with you. I've done several bicycles this way over the years. I guess mainly the hubs. Putting the grease fittings in is the main thing I wanted to show you. This other stuff is basically, I guess, what you would already know to do. But I just thought I would throw that in there, a little land yap, which means a little something extra. Hopefully this will make your cycling excursions a little more pleasant. Uh, when you get on a bicycle that's so free that Pedaling becomes almost effortless unless you're going up a steep hill. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable. I try to go for a bike ride at least once a week. It can be a pleasure on a bicycle that's that's easy to pedal. It's amazing when you coast down hills when it's free like this. Thank you for watching.